Hey guys, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I want to talk about overclocking my GTX 1070 and if it really is worth it. So these are my overclock settings right here. Obviously voltage is maxed out, power limit maxed out, temp limit maxed out, and I have plus 100 on the core and plus 400 on the memory. Now in most of the games I play, I could actually get plus six or 700 on the memory. However, after doing some intense testing, I found that around 400, maybe I could get a little bit more, but 400 was a f safe bet, uh, was pretty stable. Um, that's something I'll get into in another video with like stress testing and all that stuff, but for this we're just going to focus on the results. So I have some screenshots here of some uh, benchmarks or some frame rates, and we're going to take a look here at F1 2018, so let me make that a little bit larger. So as you can see here, we have only an average change of about 10 FPS. We're going from 153 to 163. That's not really that big of a deal, especially when you're considering how high of a frame rate we're getting on either stock or overclocked. And if you look at the 1% and 0.1%, it roughly follows the same model. So not that big of an increase. However, an increase nonetheless. I just don't think it's all that worth it, at least for this game. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one. So, uh, whoa, sorry. For Ghost Recon Wildlands, this one, uh, same story here, not really all that Im impressive, we're going from 87 to 93 on average, 72 to 77, and 69 to 72. Again, an increase, for sure, statistically significant, for sure, noticeable in game, probably not. Again, we're going to breeze through these pretty quickly, only because they're roughly uh, the same story for each one. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're going from 94 to 99. And this was extremely consistent, extremely repeatable. So we gained about 5 FPS on average going, you know, from 94 to 99 on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, just in case I didn't say it yet, all these games run at high, and the only thing I'd ever turn off is motion blur. So high with motion blur turned off, this is the performance we're getting on the 1070. So again, Pretty good results overall, like getting this high of a frame rate in Shadow of the Tomb Raider High, because that game is pretty demanding. It's definitely GPU limited uh, with my system, but pretty good frame rates. Overclocking gets you a little bit more. Nothing too impressive. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, this is the last one. So I stopped after a while because it was the same story for each one. So we have Strange Brigade. We're going from 108 to 113. Again, a decent little improvement, but not game-changing, not really noticeable. All these changes really didn't give us anything drastic. I think this is the common case for most overclocks. Of course, certain pieces of hardware, certain components are going to have different results, right? So an, uh, a Vega 56 with the proper tweaks and proper overclocks is going to perform almost the same as a Vega 64, and it's within 9% or so of a 1080. So again, within 9 or so percent of a Vega 64, you're paying significantly less, right? You're paying around 300 bucks for a new Vega 56, so that's pretty good. However, that being considered, um, most graphics cards overclock like this. You get a little bit more performance in games, not really noticeable unless you're really at that edge, right? If you were getting 55 and you wanted 60, you could overclock and get 60, you know, but... If you're thinking overclocking is going to just skyrocket your card into, you know, the future, it really isn't. It really is not. It's not that big of a change. You're not going to really notice that big of a difference. Now, where things look a little different, like actually somewhat impressive, is in these synthetic benchmarks. So in Fire Strike, if we take a closer look at this, um, our combined score, however, stays very much the same. But if you look at our graphics score, now just so you know, I did not... Or I should say I left the CPU at the same frequency for all these tests. Yet, as you can see, with an overclocked graphics card, we're getting an even higher CPU test. So it seems like we were a little bit limited by our graphics card during the CPU test. The GPU test has a pretty significant increase. Again, none of the games we tested had increases quite this large, and our overall score increased as well. So synthetics seem to really take advantage of every little bit of performance you're able to get them. So if you're just looking at synthetic benchmarks, the overclock is going to look much more impressive than it actually is in games. And the same thing can be said about Time Spy. Look at that. The uh, GPU test, we get a pretty significant jump. 
CPU test is almost the same, and our overall, we get a pretty significant jump again. So this is something that's actually noticeable. However, again, we don't see that translate over when we're playing games. That comes to just the way these game engines are optimized and uh, how the, what they're set up for, right? So again, uh, it comes down to the developers. <laughs> these synthetic benchmarks are gonna do much better in every scenario with every graphics card, especially Vega cards, they love synthetic benchmarks. And so this is where I think overclocking really should be done, is if you're trying to get a higher score in one of these benchmarks, overclock and see how high you can get. And to be honest, I could get even higher scores in uh, Time Spy because I could run a higher overclock without crashing that I couldn't run in Fire Strike, which is a little weird to me, but um, it just goes to show that depending on what test you're doing, you can get better or worse results and it really comes down to system stability, which is why you should consider all these things when you're thinking about overclocking and look at all of this, these scores and the actual frame rates um, when you're looking at it to see if it's worth it, right? Is it worth the time, investment, and all the other things that come with it that you might not even be thinking about right now just to get a little bit more FPS? In my opinion, not really. If you really need more performance, then you should save up a little bit more money, maybe sell the card you have now and buy just a straight up better graphics card or better component. If you have the card and you're just like, let me try it out, no, no harm in that, go ahead, try it out, see how it works for you. Maybe it gives you that little bit more performance that you want. Maybe you're the type of person that just wants to make sure that you're getting all the FPS that you can get. Personally, I like to do it as a hobby. I like to run benchmarks, but typically I just leave my card at stock when I'm doing normal gaming because it's more than enough for what I need to do. Um, I will do a follow-up video talking about the maybe not so obvious costs of overclocking. Um, it's a little sneak peek. It really comes down to like heat slash cooling slash um, power draws slash instability slash noise from running fans and so on. So I'll have a video talking about all those things and if just to kind of go through it with you guys. But these are my results for my GTX 1070. Uh, I guess decent, but nothing too crazy nothing out of the ordinary. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one.